Happy Sunday, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, D. Don Elizabeth. And here we are with episode five of Let's Be Real with D. Don Elizabeth. And today we do not have a special guest. We have me. And it has been long overdue for a weight loss q and I know I mentioned that I was going to do one a while back. But I was like, let's just make this live time. Let's just do it live where people can ask their questions real time. And we can just have a conversation about it. So. Let's go over the rules. Well, let us let me introduce myself a little bit better for people who are new. So if you are new to this channel, my name is Dee Dunn Elizabeth. I started my journey about over three years ago, and I am down a total of 150 plus pounds. I say plus because the weight go up, then the weight go down. We in a little window right now. So that's why I say 150 plus. And I've done this journey all natural with exercise and nutrition. And now I am currently a fitness trainer changing women's lives through my YouTube channel, changing women's lives through my Instagram channel, not even women, men also. Just changing people's lives, motivating people, and just letting people know that they can do anything that they put their mind to. And that's just the gist of who I am. And welcome to this channel. So we're going to do this weight loss Q&A and let's go over the rules. So here are the rules. So the recording will be uploaded to watch later. I'm going to timestamp all the questions. So that way, if you come in and you ask the same question that was previously answered, I will make sure that it's timestamp for you to go back and watch it later, just so that we can get in as many questions as possible. All right, everybody good with that? Check, check, check. Let me get a check. Somebody say check. Somebody check, say check, and then we can roll. No check. I need to know everybody is clear. Check, 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 check. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and hit it. So we're going to uh, go ahead and start with the first question. So I'm going to be looking at the chat and I'm going to pick and choose which one, which questions that I want to go with, which question that I feel like most people would like for me to answer. So we're going to wait about one minute and then go ahead and type in your questions. Even if you want to type in more than one question, I have all the chat here available and we can go ahead and roll with it. I also wrote down a couple of questions that people asked a while back and I will pull from those if we weren't out of question. OK, so first question. Show. Is it possible to do this without a gym? And my answer is yes. Here is why. So one thing about weight loss is it's literally about an energy balance, like an energy balance. So in order to lose the weight, you have to consistently, consistently consume less, consistently consume less than you're intaking over a period of time. So exercise is literally just extra when it comes to losing the weight as long as you're in a caloric deficit like i said which is consistently intaking less than you're burning off then you will lose the weight that you're trying to lose the gym comes into play just because physical activity is needed for our general health and if you have like a certain physique goal if you want to build muscle and not look as loose while you're losing weight then the gym will be possible but if you're speaking in terms of like do you need like actual gym equipment no you can literally have light weights and still build muscle you can still do a full workout at home with one set of dumbbells and resistance bands that is also possible as well so when i tell people like literally focusing on nutrition should be number one when it comes to you know get into what you want with your fitness goals with your journey goals Fitness should be your main focus and the gym should be an accessory to your, you know, what are you trying to achieve? I hope they answered it good enough, Miss Jessica. Okay, so next question. When you started your journey, at what point did you notice a major difference? Okay, y'all. So let's talk about that because I, I tell my clients this all the time. It took a minute for me to actually see a big change. And this goes also into saying like how losing Scale pounds is different from actually losing body fat because I feel like once you start to drop that body fat, that's when you actually see the change in your body. So that first month alone, I lost 20 pounds that first month. And that's just with being consistent, sticking to my, you know, sticking to my regimen. 
And but it wasn't until about three months in that I like me personally, everybody around me probably could see it, but it wasn't until like three months in that I actually saw a change in my body. And that was just but from like just staying consistent and like not even staying consistent because after that first month I was okay, but then literally for that first three months, I cheated every weekend. And I guess we can't, I don't want to say that she didn't like I literally didn't track on the weekends. I ate whatever I wanted on the weekends, but even still in that three months along with just being consistent throughout the week falling off a little bit on the weekends it took about three months for me to see a drastic change and then plus that first few months I wasn't really taking pictures so a lot of it I probably would have saw if I would have like bowed by my pictures but after that three months when I compared the picture from when I first started to then I saw a drastic change so that's that goes into me saying take pictures because sometimes we get caught up in the scale and relying on the scale to see if we making uh progress will be very hard to see take those pictures get butt naked Sometimes you, if it's in your phone, get butt naked, bra and panties, booty naked, however you want to get. And that's where you will really see the real change when you on your journey, because it's hard to see it when you're looking at yourself every day. But if you look at yourself on your phone, it's a big difference, y'all. I kid y'all not. It's a big difference. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. It took me about three months, but of course, everyone is different. Like, it just depends on how drastic you go with the weight loss. Like, if you go super duper drastic, you probably can see a change within a month. But with me, when I started, I wasn't going super drastic because I wanted this to last a long time. Okay, so does alcohol affect your weight loss? Okay, this is a great question because I just shared this into uh, into my chat. So I'm going to just read this really quickly. It's um this this trainer in Atlanta. He just, y'all, he just trained me. Uh, We had a group class at my gym. He just trained me, and he just posted this. So I wanted to read this to y'all. Okay. So ap- alcohol myth buster. Let's let me get y'all a side story. So I'm on a 30 day challenge just because I wanted to like tap back into my commitment. So I went out to the club with my family, but I didn't drink because I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna drink. I ain't gonna do that. Like I ain't gonna drink. And so somebody, one of my friends goes, you know it ain't no calories in alcohol. And I said lies. It's definitely calories and alcohol. That's why sometimes they recommend that you drink alcohol straight because it's less calories and less sugar and like straight shots versus a uh, lemon drop. Full of sugar, full of extra, but you know we love our lemon drop, y'all. That's, when I go out, that's what I'm asking for, a lemon drop. I don't want no shot. Keep the Casamigos, give me a, sh- uh, give me a lemon drop. So, okay, let me read this, y'all. So, alcohol myth buster. It go. It says yes. Drinking straight vodka or tequila has less calories than a mixed drink, but the mix, the myth that a shot has zero calories is a hundred percent false. Typically, there are zero carbs, zero fat, zero protein. Alcohol does contain seven calories per gram. One shot of vodka is around ninety-seven calories, but the shots that you get in the club are like. 1.5 to 2 ounces. So you're looking at about 165 to 170 calories per shot. Your girl always do her research. So so let's read the caption. So he bring he brought a lot of things to attention here. So I think that's why I really want to go into this question for you, Nani. I hope I said your name right. So so it's basically calories or I mean alcohol is empty calories. So alcohol can be carb, fat, and protein free, but it still contains calories. A shot of tequila, 1.5 ounces, is close to 100 calories. Two shots, and you've added 200 empty calories just because it doesn't have any macronutrients, no fats, no carbs, no protein, which equals up to our caloric deficit. So adding in mixers adds even more like the sugar the grenadine that's straight sugar straight carbs and then it has zero nutritional value so two alcohol is used as fuel first this means that when you consume alcohol your body wants to metab- metab- metabolize I, don't, I, don't, I didn't say that right metabolize or burn it first instead of the glucose from carbs or lipids from fat so while your body is working to burn off the alcohol it can also store the excess carbs and lipids as as fat so the effect on organs i know a lot of people say that if you drink a lot of alcohol it affects your liver which is true so when you drink uh this is typically a result of heavy drinking it causes a fatty liver the liver is the body's main fat burning organ so the overconsumption of alcohol will cause it what makes it even harder for you to burn fat so when you this is the this is what gets me this is why i say alcohol affects your weight loss just because i said a lot to answer a question this is what gets me when you drink you want to eat 
Literally, y'all, anytime I get drunk, I want IHOP, I want pancakes, I want shippies, I want a donut, I want a kolache, and I'm not going to think twice about my calories. So this is what it really does it. So alcohol lowers your in inhibitions and effects on judgment. So it's very possible to feel the urge to eat both more than usual, even foods that you wouldn't typically consume. Because me, I'll be in the club, tipsy, I want a 10-piece. I don't usually eat a 10-piece, so that's where that comes in as well. So now you're getting calories from the liquor and calories from the food. So, so basically, I said all that to say, in my opinion, alcohol does affect your weight loss when it's used, when it's when it's into when it's when you intake it a lot over a period of time. So I always tell people like it's nothing wrong with like drinking when you're on your weight loss journey, especially because you want it to be a lifestyle. Like I never, I like unless I just. I'm not going to ever stop drinking. That's just period. I'm going to always give me a drink. So it's like, once you realize like how to make it work, like it's just good to be aware of like how alcohol affects your body when you're on a weight loss journey. Because when I first started, I used to go out and drink every weekend. But then I realized that when I used to drink a lot, my body gets super duper dehydrated. So I have to like literally put all, like drink a lot of water back in to get my body back on track. Literally, it's the alcohol and the food. Like I said, because I always want to go with IHOP. So I wouldn't say cut out alcohol completely but i would say drink it in moderation and once again like live your life weight loss is weight loss living your life is living your life but just be aware of what can happen with like intaking alcohol a lot especially every weekend because your girl was moving in circles trying to get past that little that little bridge so i hope i answer your question nani okay sorry y'all i'm going okay what is your breakfast food for weight loss Okay, so I'll just talk about this. I, it's literally, like I said, it's literally no specific food. Like, y'all see people on TikTok and Instagram saying, eat this to lose weight. Eat this to speed up weight loss. And, like, y'all, when I say you can eat whatever you want, I literally mean that you can eat whatever you want. Of course, you want to cop for those healthier nutritional foods but when you've been in a caloric deficit and you somebody like me that used to eat three double cheeseburgers y'all used to eat three double spec three double stacks from wendy's and a large fry so i was eating just as much as my daddy so when you're a person like me it's hard to be like okay well i'm just gonna only eat this i'm gonna only eat this not gonna work for done so what i do is i pick different stuff that works with my caloric deficit that's why i get into tracking and if you're not a person that's into tracking cop for intuitive eating like eating when you're hungry listening to your hunger cues it's many ways to do this but let me tell y'all what's been my favorite breakfast so far i made a video making it y'all the english muffin from heb i put peanut butter and jelly on it and then I eat some egg whites mixed with a regular egg because egg whites be cool. But when you add that egg to it, it gives it the real flavor with two slices of turkey bacon, y'all. That's been my favorite breakfast. I'm, I know I'm all about detail. So, yeah, I literally eat that. I've been eating that a lot. Or if I don't eat that, it'll be like oatmeal with the eggs and the bacon. Same old, same old. I like to stick to the same things. And with me being on a weight loss journey, like, I be open to try stuff. But I like to eat stuff that I know that's going to be good. Just because who got time to be trying stuff? Mm -mm. Okay, so I have a major sweet tooth. Oh, wait, I have a major sweet tooth. Should I stop with the sweets cold turkey? Do not go cold turkey. Rule number one to being on the weight loss journey for a long period of time is to not go cold turkey. If you want to stick to this a month from now, three months from now, still be on it a year from now, do not go cold turkey because your body literally... It just won't work. So what I did was like when I was a person, I when I was growing up, I really didn't like sweets. But over time, I kind of started to grow a craving for sweets. I just found healthier substitutes. Like, yeah, so the free, the frozen Greek yogurt bars, which is only 100 calories. And since I'm a person that buy by calories, if I feel like I really want something sweet, I'm going to make sure that it fits into my calories. And that just goes into showing you how to eat stuff in moderation. It's not saying like don't eat brownies. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Because only thing is like you're going to continue Continually, continuously want it, want it, want it. So then when you do have a chance to eat it, you're going to overdo it because you're, I didn't be nothing done that. So that's why I like sharing my story, y'all, because I would like be like, oh, I'm not, I'm going to cut off this for a month. Then after the month comes, your girl going in, eating up everything, and then think I'm going to just go right back to that mindset after I get it out of my system, but it don't work like that. I would definitely say go for some more substitutes, or if you are a person who track calories, 
squeeze it in there, like learn how to eat in moderation. I feel like the key to learning how to eat stuff in moderation is realizing that you can have it. The more you try to tell yourself, no, you can't have this, it only makes you want it more. So then that's what leads to the overconsumption of those things. Literally, y'all, when you picking and choosing what you want to eat or what you feel like you're craving, it's all mental. Like you don't, you don't only want something so bad when you feel like you can't have it. Like, it won't be a craving if you just let allow yourself to have it. So find healthier substitutes. And sometimes I don't find healthier substitutes. I go get their cheesecake, the real one. Not the jack in the box, the little slice that they give you in the plate. I go get the real cheesecake and I just keep on going because I know that, like, me allowing myself to have those from time to time makes it work. And that's why I'm still going strong three years from now. Period. Okay, next. Okay, boom. How done as a woman, Miss Tiana Michelle. Hey, my girl. How done as a woman? I deal with that monthly distraction. Tell me about it, girl. How do you stay on your diet plan when you have all these cravings? I love your workouts, by the way. Okay, y'all. So I was just I was just doing this because like I literally have been doing so much research on periods because like sometimes. A lot, a lot of times you don't realize how your period plays a big role on your, you know, your fitness goal. So I I recently found out that leading up to your cycle, everyone's body is different, but leading up to your cycle, when you're working out, the only thing that's fueling those workouts are stress. So when your when your cortisol levels get too high, it could be kind of kind of productive to what you're trying to do. So what I do on my cycle, if we're being honest sometimes I go in. Y'all, sometimes I go in. So with me being on the 30-day challenge now and my cravings are kind of like shooting through the roof, I made room for those. Like, I made room for that. Like, I made room for a brownie or maybe one day I was like, oh, done. I really want some chocolate. So I made room for two brownies. And if I, like, squeezed in another Twix, I just take something that's off. But, like, I, the reason why I always tell people to not get so down on themselves about that monthly distraction because literally it only happens one time a month. Like a lot of people get frustrated when they weight shoot up on that cycle, but y'all, that literally is all a part of being a woman. You do not want that to not happen. You don't want your body to not show the natural signs of that your body is being natural, that your body is being regulated. Like it's normal to gain three to five pounds on your cycle. If you're going in, you eating a lot of extra, it's normal to gain even more. But like as soon as you get right back on track, all that water weight that you gain within your on your cycle will come right back down. Unless you eating over 3,500 calories, you didn't gain a pound of fat. And one pound of fat is 3,500 calories. Now that's that's like a whole piece of a 10 piece, a cheesecake, that's a lot. And I mean, to each his own, because I probably didn't eat 3,500 calories before. Like, hey, your girl can eat. But that, that's really what be my advice is just to be kind to yourself and try to incorporate some of those things that you have cravings for. Like, if you know, okay, oh, I'm craving this today. Let me make this work. Let me put that in. And just, like, just realize that it's so normal to have that, that them cravings. Like, it's not, like, you just being weak-minded. It's your body. Like, it's being a woman. It's your emotions that have a lot to do. And that's one thing that we have to realize when we go through this monthly period is that we are women and things are going on in our body hormones are acting so things will change but once it's all you feel yourself get back on track like you feel yourself be like okay it's gone i'm cool get right back on track but once that month come that monthly distraction come get right back on track don't try to fall into a slump about like oh i ate too much oh i did this and i did that just get literally right back on track and that little, that little two, three days of you eating off track will not stop your progress. And that's one thing to keep in mind. So don't ask me what size do I wear. So when I first started, y'all, I was in a 24, a size 24 pants. And now I wear between a 10 and a 12. Like, I probably can get in a 12 because, y'all, now that I have been focused on, like, growing my glutes, everything fit at the top but when it's time to go up my hip child is booted on going them jeans so between the 10 and the 12 that's what i'm working with now and for bra size because i know a lot of people won't ask that question y'all when i first started i was a 42 h and now i'm up about a 30 38 d y'all it changed like i go get uh get size here and size there everybody tell me different because like with being honest y'all once i lost a lot of weight 
my my breasts kind of like sag. Are right? they saggy? They don't sit up because of the weight loss. But your girl get her a good bra, and I keep on moving because that's period. Mm hmm. Okay, so oh, I just answered that. So what's your advice? So then another thing I would say is power through menstrual days. Like I said, y'all leading up to your psyche, your body is under a lot of amounts of stress. So like you know, and putting extra stress on it by working out could like kind of be kind of productive so i wouldn't say refrain from exercise i just would say take it light go for a walk do a little light circuit don't overexert yourself because you're tired you feel that your body is tired and sometimes you might feel like just because you're so emotional you feel like oh i'm not doing what i'm supposed to do because i feel like that every month but i'm like done once this pass you're gonna do what you gotta do to keep on going so do not be super duper hot hard on yourself i still go to the gym when, when i'm on my period just because i know that exercise helps that flow drinking a lot of water helps that flow and then like another interesting thing is when i first started my uh journey my cycle used to be seven days long y'all used to be like super duper heavy but now i'm like we consistently like now it's like my cramps are get way better like now it's like i cramped that first day and then i'm okay or maybe the second day and sometimes i don't even feel it coming it lasts about four days two to three days where it's super heavy and then it's over versus like when I first started, it used to be literally heavy for that first five days. And I used to cramp for like three days straight. So it used to be super duper bad, but like with me just being on, exercising and staying on track with my health, it has improved a lot. So, okay. So do you recommend lots of cardio over strength training when first starting out? So when I first started, y'all, I did a lot of cardio. So this is why I would 10 out of 10 would not recommend doing a lot of card cardio. I would literally recommend a nice balance, a balance between strength training and cardio, but prioritize strength training over cardio. Cardio should be accessory because cardio is good for our heart. Cardiovascular is good for our heart. So you still want to do cardio, but I would definitely say add in some of that resistance training to help you build that muscle. Because sometimes people drop a lot of weight and then be like, okay, I want to tone, but the thing is you cannot tone muscle that is not there. So it's very important to strength train so that you are building enough muscle along Along the way to that when it's time to where you get to like okay well i can kind of stay here then all you're kind of doing is just recomposition and building more muscle on top of the muscle that you already built along the way of your journey so i would say like me i strength train about four to five days each week and then i do about you could do cardio versus like time like you could do cardio as a time period like maybe 90 minutes of cardio a week so that's like maybe 30 minutes here 30 minutes there you could even start at 60 minutes of cardio a week and just breaking it up maybe you have 20 minutes this day 30 minutes another day and just spreading it out over time but your strength training days should definitely outweigh your cardio days so i hope that was helpful Okay, so this one says, how to not be mad at yourself after gaining so much weight than starting your journey? Like, I was 300 pounds when I started my journey, but I beat myself up that I got this big. So, my advice would to be, like, literally beating yourself up only makes what you're, what you're feeling and what you're going through worse. When I'm the type of person that I beat myself up a lot, but I always had that reality check, like, hey, when I first started my journey, I was like, you know what, done. I'm here. I'm 300. I was 311 pounds. I was like, you know what? I'm here. And now it's time to make a change. So I didn't even try to focus too much on what I had, what I had ate or what I had did to get to the point that I was at, at that moment. I just focused on what I could do to get myself out of this position. And once you fuel like all those negative thoughts that you're feeling towards yourself, the best thing to do is to replace them with gratitude. Like, okay. I'm 300 pounds, but now I got my mind made up that I'm ready to do something to help myself, to improve my health. And I'm going to fuel myself with positivity, with gratitude, even when I feel down, to keep pushing towards. Like, literally, one thing I always have to tell myself is if something happened in the past, it's in the past. The only thing that we can change is right now. We can only change today i can't determine what i might eat a week from now i can't determine if i might go out this weekend and get a cheesecake or a 10 piece but i can determine what i'm going to do today and i can fill myself with that positivity to make sure that i know that i'm moving towards moving away from those negative thoughts so i would say to not sit there and beat yourself up about how you got to that point all you need to realize is that you're alive 
you're healthy and you're well and you're in the position to move forward towards whatever you want to do in life whatever you want to achieve in life and y'all know as women we beat ourselves up so much and that only like makes it worse on ourselves that only makes it harder for us to get to where we're trying to get to fill yourself with positive positivity fill yourself with gratitude hannah you are a beautiful woman you are more than capable you are strong and anything that you want to achieve you can do starting today like don't even sit and think about the negativity for any longer start today go get go go get get up right now you can start watching this live right now and you can go watch it later get up right now and figure out come up with a game plan of how you want to positively train yourself to get to where you want to be in the future i always tell myself done. sometimes i wake up on the bad side of the bed i wake up and i'll be like you know what done think about who you want to be in the future think about that woman that you envision yourself you know that 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 best version of yourself and show up as her every day and i'm pretty sure hannah that best version of yourself is not beating herself up right now she's so well living her best life doing everything that's best for her and that's going to be you today hannah so i hope that this was helpful okay next up is it better to meal prep than cook no randomly? So when, Amelia, it all depends on how much time you got. So when I was in college, I had time to cook randomly. But even then, too, I still kind of had it planned out. So it wasn't random. I knew what I was going to eat, but I just had to cook it. The reason now why I meal prep is because it makes it so much easier for, like, with my schedule. I'm always on the run. I'm always training. I'm always working out. So I don't really have time to sit there and cook. So meal prepping is so much easier because it allows you to not even think too hard about what you're going to eat because you already have it ready. You already have everything portioned out. And all you have to do is just warm it up, ding it up, however you want to do it, and roll with it. It takes the extra stress off like, oh, I don't know what to eat because that'd be me. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know what to eat. Now I'm stressed out. Now I'm hungry. Now I'm trying to probably go try to go to a fast food restaurant. But meal prep, like plan ahead. So that you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Okay. I hope that's the same. Uh, so how important is meal prep? Yeah. So that's why I say meal prepping is very important. Like uh it's helpful to create new habits because I have been meal prepping for like a long time now, and it's very helpful because it's literally so it's so easier to just already know what you're going to eat versus trying to figure it out at the last minute. I'm the type of person, when I get hungry, everybody needs to get back. Everybody needs to back up and get back right now because I ain't going to tell them who I might go off on just because I'm hungry. So by me just meal prepping, it helps me stay on track. It helps me not get so stressed out about like what I'm going to eat, how I'm going to eat it, when I'm going to cook it, crunch time, not really having time management. And it also works for with my calories because I'm able to – log it in ahead of time and still keep moving and have everything that i'm gonna eat already in okay right there so how to stay consistent with the busy job i work 12 hour shifts and want to lose weight okay so like i said earlier just focus on nutrition when you work in a 12 hour sugar i can only imagine how tired that you are and sometimes even if you say oh i work a lot so i really can't like you really can't make time for the gym and that's perfectly fine focus on nutrition like literally focus on nutrition as being your your tool your main key to unleashing the best version of yourself so like i said meal prep have your meals ready so that while you at work you can easily pop it in and go for it and not have too much to think about focus on nutrition and whenever the time allows even if it's that one or two days out the week that you can go work out if it's something that you really want to do as far as working out make it your mission to make it to the gym even if it or make it work out at home for even if it's 30 minutes but make sure that you make nutrition the main you know your main focus when it comes to being on a busy job what's up p okay so how can i really enjoy the journey and stop thinking about it okay y'all this journey is so mental that's actually a great question it's so mental like everything that you do everything that requires it like literally eating right going to the gym is the physical it's literally the mental that gets you up to go it's the mental that makes you get up and do what you're supposed to do even when you don't want to do it so it's all mental so one thing that i had to realize is i always think about the old me when i first started how i was just so into my journey and it really i really didn't take too much thought into it because i learned how to enjoy the journey you have to find joy in what you're doing or it will be dreadful that's just imagine 
being at a job that you hate. You don't like the job. You don't like the people at your job, but you still show up and just imagine how hard your days go. And the only way to make that better is if you quit or you just learn how to block out everything that's going on around you and find the positive in every situation. So that's why I always say, like, find a way to enjoy the journey. With me, I like to work out. So if, if it got to a point where I feel like I didn't want to work out anymore, I started feeling stressed, I started working out with people at my gym. I used to work out by myself a lot, a lot but now I work out with people at my gym just to give me some motivation, some positive energy around me. Find a way to enjoy it. Like, I like to go work out. I like to go run. And I like, like, I like cooking. I like going to the grocery store, y'all. Like, when I used to be caught up in a pandemic, when we couldn't go nowhere, the one way for me to get out the house was going to the grocery store and just browsing through the aisles, thinking of stuff like, oh, okay, let me see how I can make this work. Let me see how I can make this work. Find you some friends that are into it. Or if you don't even have friends that's on the web that you own, go find you a workout group. Go find you a support group that, that you feel like, I feel like sometimes you just feel like you alone. So you feel like, oh, everybody else not doing what I'm doing. So it's kind of boring. But sometimes we got to realize when we own on stuff like this, everybody not going to be what we own and everybody not going to understand what we trying to do. So you got to go find you a community that understands that. Find you a community that will support you daily, keep you uplifted daily and own what you own. Like that, just surround yourself with positive energy and find one aspect of the journey that you enjoy doing. Like people sometimes force themselves to do this and do that on the journey. But if you do not like doing that, don't force yourself to do it because it only will become dreadful. And we want this journey to be as amazing as possible. Like you want it to be uplifting. You want it to be showing yourself like, oh, okay, a month ago I couldn't do this, but now I can do that. Like finding ways to keep you excited about what you're doing. Okay, so what's your opinion on someone significantly overweight to lose somewhere, maybe 15, 20 pound counting calories before they extra exercising? Like I said, yes, that would be my first, that would literally be my first uh, advice is to start counting calories because you can, like I said, you can literally lose weight without working out. Like working out is an accessory. Of course, like for general fitness, uh, for general health, you want to get into physical activity and that can literally just be walking, like walking through your neighborhood. But I would say when you first start counting your calories, count them calories as consistent as possible. That's what's going to get you results being as super duper consistent. Sometimes when people want that weight to drop fast, all it will take is for you to be consistent, like literally consistent. And think of it being fast, like not within one month or not within two months sometimes it might take longer because everybody everybody's body is different but when you first start be as consistent as possible and whenever you get a time to go for a walk go for a walk because that will only just boost your results okay do you stop eating at a certain time elizabeth oh, i like that name okay so i did intermittent fasting a while back but the only thing about intermittent fasting is you know you eat between 12 and 8 and uh the only reason why i started doing that is because i wanted i don't even know why to be honest i don't even know why i started intermittent fasting like i said y'all just used to be trying stuff and i'm glad i did because now i can show y'all my tell y'all my experience so with intermittent fasting it really was no difference the only thing that was a struggle for me with intermittent fasting is i was not able to eat enough within that time period so if you're a person that know that you can't eat enough between 12 and 8 because you're trying to eat all your calories because it's still helpful to make sure you're still eating all your calories that for that day within that time period so under eating is just as harmful as overeating it's, it's like so when i was in that that window i would under eat like i was not eating enough so one thing that i realized is if you eat a bag of chips at eight o'clock at 8.13, it's going to be the same amount of calories and the same amount of macros. So it really doesn't matter what time that you eat. Generally, I like to stop eating at least four hours before I go to sleep. That way I can know that my food is fully digested and like when I'm going to sleep, I'm fully at rest. Because if you eat too close before it's time for you to go to bed, your body can't really rest fully because it's constantly trying to break down that food that you just consumed. So I hope that was helpful, Elizabeth. Okay, boom. Keisha B. Hey, Dunn, what is some advice for pushing through those recovery days? My thing is I know that you will be sore, but child, I'll be hurting. So resting one day leads to two, th th two to three days. Now my week is gone. Okay, y'all, a lot of people do this. Let me tell you why. 
So the only time you get sore is when your body have not worked a certain type of muscle group over time, like for a long period of time. So when you go into your first workout that you have not worked out in a long time, please expect to be sore. But here's the T. The T is literally if you go work out the next day while you sore, stretch good, your soreness will go away faster when you keep working out versus you waiting until it go away to start back working out again. Do not wait until your soreness go away to go back to the gym and keep working out because literally that two to three days, like my clients will typically be sore for that first day. And then by the end of the week, they good. But I have had people that will come to work out and then will come back and be sore for a whole week. The whole next week, they still sore because it's like once your body get used to working those muscles, you want to keep working those muscles and keep stretching them, keep moving them. And that's how they loosen up. Soreness is just stiff. Like it, they become stiff. So if you stop working out it only makes you be in pain more but working through that soreness is your best bet when it comes to getting your body used to those movements because even i still get sore but even when i'm sore i still continue to work out because i know that's the only way to get rid of it quickly if i get sore and then don't work out child i'll be sore for a long time as well okay so Ah, I, I am D Lala. So I have six pounds I can't get off almost at my goal. Do I cut calories more or just do a detox? And if I detox, will the weight just come back? Yes. To the second question. I don't recommend detoxing to lose that last six pounds because detoxing, like I said, if your liver is functioning properly, your body is naturally detoxing itself. So I wouldn't recommend a detox to lose that last six pounds as long as, like, if you go into the restaurant regularly, you you drinking enough water, your body is functioning properly unless you're not, you're not constipating nothing. So there's no reason why you should do a detox. So it's a couple of things that you can assess here. So one thing I want you to look at is your calories. Like how ac accurately are you counting your calories? calories so you could look at like if you're using a food scale like things that you're cooking are you weighing everything that could everything that you're including because sometimes it could be you just not tracking things right and so once you assess like okay maybe let me see if i'm tracking everything right how many if you're working out how many days a week of you working out maybe you could add in a little bit more cardio or Maybe it just will take a little bit more consistency to break that last six pounds because six pounds, when you almost see your goals, that last six pounds is going to take a lot of consistency because your body will in some way start to resist. So it's a, it's a couple of things that you might need to tweak. And I'm interested in talking to you more deeply about that. You can shoot me an email. But usually, if you go back and look at your log and see how you're tracking, are you using a food scale? Are you wearing everything that's included? How are your weekends going? Because when you're on that last six pounds, your weekends really matter when you're trying to break that last six pounds. Like, are you tracking all the way through the weekends? Are you work like are you working out? Or are you just focusing on nutrition? It's a lot of things that you could think about, but I will assess all those things before I cut calories. And if I, the last thing I would try to do is to cut calories because I want, like, I'll be wanting people to eat as much as they can and still get the results. And then focus on, like, what, see which one of those that you're lacking in. And then if you can't figure out what you're lacking in, I say wait at least one more week or two more weeks to see if it budge at that calorie count. And then you can head to adjusting. So next time. Okay. Is it okay to do strength training first thing in the a.m. prior to eating? Yes. So some people do stuff fasted. When I first started working out, I would work out fasted, but baby, I can't do that no more. Because when I'm working out, like, I feel like I always tell my clients, eat something before you work out because that energy, I mean, that food will give you energy to fuel your workout. So it's definitely okay to eat then go work out because that's what i do i wake up i eat i get dressed and i go straight straight into my workout okay so what is the best total calorie intake for long-term maintenance is 1800 good what do you do so 
everybody's calorie caloric deficit and caloric calorie maintenance is different because it's all based on your weight your height your age your activity level so no general number is going to be good for each person when it comes to maintenance i do have a very great like a good video on my uh, on my youtube on how to calculate your caloric deficit and so your basal metabolic rate will be your maintenance so that's what you will try that's what you will want to focus on and if you want me to calculate that i have a link that you can submit for that as well but like whenever y'all see people do these what i eat in a days uh how many calories that they eat do not automatically assume that that's your caloric maintenance or that's your caloric deficit because everyone's body is different i could be the same weight as somebody else but if they're older than me it changes if i work out six days a week intensively that changes that that allows me to eat more to keep going so everyone's caloric calorie intake is different and do not ever try to match us up with somebody else. Okay, so good afternoon. I'm struggling with weight. What advice can you give me to start on my weight loss journey? What should I stop first? So the wrong word is what should you stop first? You should not stop anything. So the only thing that I would do is just to give you a new focus. So when you start your weight loss journey, the only thing you're doing is giving yourself a new focus when it comes to what you're going to do next to move forward. So like I said, the first thing that you want to do is focus on nutrition. If you're not mentally ready, because counting calories is it's a mental thing. If you're not mentally ready to start counting calories, I would just start with making healthier choices and get your body moving going for a walk three times a week come up with a schedule that you know that you could commit to if you know that okay i could go for a walk three times this week and maybe instead of fried food i'm gonna start baking my food or i'm gonna start grilling my food and just trying to make small approaches sometimes people try to make those big leaps into starting a weight loss journey and that's that's technically not what you want to do so for me when i first started i started with counting my calories that was the first thing that i started because that allowed me to become aware with what i'm intaking because sometimes even when you think that you're eating healthy you could still be eating a lot more than what you need to get the results so that could also be a thing as well but i started with working out two times a week but my main focus was making sure that i count i counted my calories but baby girl i would recommend coming up with you a schedule like if you know that you could go for a walk three times a week go for a walk and just start with making healthier eating choices start to just become mindful of what you're intaking and just get mentally ready and once you commit to that for maybe a couple of weeks or a couple for a month then you can move on to making a newer adjustment and just working your way up to making adjustments day by day that way you can learn to get your body accustomed to making changes and actually sticking to those changes and not making big changes to where it's overwhelming i hope that makes sense the b and m family saw you on live and wanted to tell you thank you for being a blessing so many people inspiration is clear you find your purpose how you're experiencing despite the success can bless others thank y'all so much all right let's see what's next so why does my mom feel like i need to work out every day girl that's my mom be doing the same thing my mind does the same thing and one thing that you have to realize is rest is very essential but it's some it's a, it's a thing called at the rest so sometimes when you feel like you need to go work out every day maybe you just want to go take a walk like once you do your schedule once you do those scheduled workout days, if you want to, like, your active recovery, your active rest days could be a walk. And that it could just be something for you to go out and get active. You could go to the mile. Literally going to the mile and walk all the way through the mile is still an active rest day because you're still getting that movement in. So don't get it caught up in your head to where you feel like, okay, if I don't work out today, then I'm not doing I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because I worked out seven days and literally was out of it for, like, a week. So don't try to over overwork yourself because it could be definitely kind of productive take your rest days and if you feel like on your rest days you really want to go get active go do something that's non-active that caused you to be active like going to the mall going to the park going for a walk just walking around doing stuff like that because you don't need to work out every day two to three rest days one or two between one and three rest days are needed for your body to keep functioning properly All right, this one says losing 40 to 50 pounds in four months healthy, trying to lose a certain amount before the end of July. So one thing I can say is it's definitely possible. 
it's possible, but I wouldn't say that it's the healthiest approach. Nine times out of 10, you probably don't need to lose that much by July because the quicker you lose the weight, the harder it is to maintain that 40, 50 pounds loss. So whatever you have, whatever you, whatever you will do to lose that much in such a short period of time, nine times out of 10, it won't be sustainable. It probably will cause you to eat very, very little, work out a lot. And then once July come, it's like you probably be super duper fatigued. So I wouldn't aim to lose that much in four months just because it might be hard to maintain and you don't want to be back at square one when it comes like when after july pass and it comes back quicker than it live so i wouldn't recommend trying to lose that much i would recommend trying to you know slow down a little bit slow down a little bit focus on making those making those small changes to get to where you're trying to be and just stick to the plan because sometimes if you take those smaller approaches and maybe you losing maybe 10 pounds a month you looking like 10 pounds a month that's still to be 40 like between let's say between i would always say a healthy weight loss is between one to two pounds a week that way it gives you time like it gives you grace to stick to it because whatever you're doing that's like a slow weight that's how much i was losing when i first started one to three pounds a week and even then too just from getting on track you could possibly drop about 20 pounds in one month but then eventually it would slow down but i wouldn't mentally aim to lose that much i would just mentally aim to like start with a um a routine that i that you know that you'll be able to stick to long term beyond july Okay, next one. I just want to know how to get rid of this fupa. What food should I eat and what exercise should I do? So one thing that I tell people all the time is wherever you hold the most weight, that will be the last place to lose. And as women, we typically hold a lot of our weight in our stomachs. That's where the stress is at. So that will be the last place to lose. So it's no, like I said, it's no specific food that you should be eating. It's no specific exercise that you should be doing to get rid of that fupa. The best thing for you to do is start with counting your macros, then in caloric deficit, because dropping your body fat percentage will get that that area down below it's like dropping your body fat percentage is what allows it because most people we all have abs whether y'all know it or not we all have abs but that layer of fat that's sitting on top of it is what we have to remove in order for that to show and that only comes with dropping your body fat percentage which comes from consistently being in a caloric deficit over a period of time so i will say still strength training because the more muscle you build the more lean the, the more lean you will become so i will definitely say strength training doing your lifts lifting weights and counting your calories still counting your calories to where that you know that over time you're dropping that body fat percentage because when you're trying to lose that that weight that fupa that's literally all body fat and it's going to come with it's going to cause you to be super duper consistent with your calories and super dip, duper consistent with your workout routine but it's no specific exercise if anybody tells you that you have to do 100 sit-ups a day because that's what i thought one time you have to do 100 sit-ups a day to lose that your stomach lies super duper lies If you drink more than a gallon of water a day, is that good or bad? Miss Angela, first of all, Miss Angela, you are not that thirsty. No, but I don't think it's bad, y'all. I don't think it's bad. Sometimes people have this idea that you could drown. My grandma was telling me that. I didn't really do too much research in it, but sometimes even after I drink my gallon of water a day, I'm super duper thirsty. So, like, I wouldn't try to just go with it, like, super duper hard with drinking that much water. But like a gallon a day should be good. I don't think it's it's harmful, but don't just be going all over the gallon now, Miss Angela. Now, okay. So is there really nothing I can do about my loose skin? Okay, so let's talk about this. So after, okay, so the reality of loose skin is that once you, like once your skin have been stretched for a long period of time, sometimes people have that, what is it called, that elasticity in their skin for it to snap back and some don't. That's why sometimes when you see how women have 
women have babies and then once they skin go back it kind of never really goes back it's loose skin so when i got down to my lowest i had a lot a lot of loose skin i gained some of my weight back like i gained some of my weight back and focused more on strength training and that kind of tightened it up a little bit but i know that in some form or fashion i may still have loose skin like i don't, I don't think i probably get to the point where i have like a six pack we don't know what this body might do but after your skin has been stretched out for a super duper long time sometimes it may snap back and sometimes it won't but my suggestion is to keep focusing on strength training because the more muscle you have the more it feels that loose skin in like focus on building more muscle that would be my best advice because that's what i did because i had a lot of loose skin in between my legs it literally sagged down and now i don't have that as bad anymore so and that just come from me like lifting a lot of weights trying to focus solely on building more muscle Hey, Don, I never get sore after working out. I could work out for 30 minutes or an hour, but I never get sore. Is that a bad thing? I feel the burn at the time of working out, but never wake up sore. No, that's not a bad thing. Like, don't ever associate soreness with, like, being a validation if you had a good workout or not. Because what that means is your body is just used to what you're doing, which is not a bad or a good thing. It's not, no, I'm not saying it's not a good thing, but, like, it's not bad that you don't get sore. It's perfectly normal because I can work out for a couple of weeks and not get sore, but like don't don't let soreness be your goal now if you if you really just want to be sore i can send you a workout that probably will get you sore but that does not still doesn't validate as if like you did a great workout because you were sore like just kind of also goes into like people say oh i work out but i don't sweat sweat or soreness does not should not be like their checkbox to say oh i had a good work workout because i sweated i had a good workout because i'm sore like don't don't focus too much on that still go do your 30 minutes missy bun still go do your 30 minutes and focus on your workouts you're doing a great job soreness is not the validation point Okay, I finally caught a live. I want to start running, but I'm 295. Should I wait until I lose like 50 pounds or can I start now? I'm down 35 pounds already. First of all, congratulations. And do not start now. So one thing that I will, will say is one thing that you'll want to do is try to see if your joints are good enough to run. Because sometimes like my legs, y'all, I'm young, but now my legs feeling a little weak when it's time for me to run. So what I would recommend is walking. Start with walking. And then like if you have like this trail, this is how I got into to running. So if you have this trail that you walk every day, you can literally start timing your run periods. Like even if it's like a small jog, like say things you like, okay, for the next 10 to 15 seconds, I'm going to run to this point. And then like kind of just push that push that the distance out or that time out you can even say okay at this tree i'm gonna start running and i'm gonna stop at this tree and then just see how like over time like you can you can like listen to your body like okay i was tired by the time i got halfway to the tree but then as you continue to keep doing it as you continue to keep running further and further your body will get used to running but when you start running it might it might cause you a little pain but if you don't have any pain take it easy start running start running now like Start running, girl. You'll be surprised at how long you can run. And one thing that I also say is concentrate on your breathing. That's really what could get you running for a long time. But keep walking, speed walking, small jogs here and there throughout your throughout your walk period, and you will be running long distance in no time. So do you suggest totally cutting out carbs for weight loss or instead just weight carbs per meal? Definitely do not recommend cutting out carbs. A lot of people cut out carbs and I 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Carbs are our main energy source. So do not cut them out. Plus 9 out of 10, everybody loves carbs. I know y'all like pizza. I know y'all like all it and that's carbs so like i said if you are into counting calories i would definitely aim well macros i would definitely aim to like making sure you hit your carb goal like if you have a carb goal use those carbs up like use them as a way to fuel you for your day sometimes when you feel tired or you feel fatigued it's because you're not intaking enough carbs and that's what gives you that energy yeah and then it's a such thing as 
good carbs and processed carbs like like chips and stuff like that like you can still have those but just eat in moderation focus on those more nutrient-based carbs like as complex carbs sweet potatoes uh what else like food and stuff like that so you don't have to cut those things out don't definitely not cut those things out so how often do you get on a scale okay so i'm gonna tell y'all do not if, if you have a negative relationship with the scale this may or may not help you this may or may help you may or may not i said it right i get on a scale every day y'all i get on a scale every day and why because Sometimes if you hop on a scale once a week, it it, it, don't, it doesn't necessarily tell you what you're trying to see. Getting on a scale, like you don't even have to get on a scale every day, but getting on a scale multiple times throughout the week will allow you to see trends. So even if you kind of circling around that same weight, your weight could still be like your, your trend could still be going downward. For example... So I have this app called Happy Skill. And so like if you can see like all my ways, like I kind of stay within that 177 range for a couple of days. But as you can see, my weight was still going downward, like 166.8, 166.7. So like having that average allows me to see actually how my weight is moving throughout over a time of period. So that's why I get on a scale every day. But even if you get on a scale twice, twice a week. Or if you don't get on a scale at all, it's worked for whatever helps you stay positive throughout your journey. Okay, so how often should you take progress pictures? I plan on keeping a journal for my weight loss journey to, to look back on the days I feel discouraged. Yes, so I would definitely aim to take a progress pictures once a week. You can do it every Monday. I like Fridays. I like to I like to take my pictures on Fridays or you can do Sundays like pick one day out the week where you know that you have the time to actually take your pictures not be in a rush take your pictures once a week or sometimes you can even do twice a week like either or either or sometimes you can do once a month like just just decide on what you want to to pick and choose but I take mine once a week and sometimes I break in between I maybe do once a month but I take them every week but I compare that first that first picture of the month to that last picture for the next month. So I kind of do like a month difference, but still take them each week because sometimes you'll start to see small, small changes throughout the week. Like from week one to week two, you might not see nothing, but week two and week three could look totally different. So that's why I take pictures a lot. So also, if you don't get in a gallon of water, is that a bad thing? Try my best to drink more water every day. It's not a bad thing if you don't get, get in a gallon. I would just aim to drink more and more of it each day so i know that if i don't have one of these i won't drink a gallon so that's why i buy this and so even if you're not finishing that every day you still want to aim to get closer and closer to the bottom so thank you for answering my question i'm a thick solid beer person should i lift heavy yes lift heavy so one thing is like sometimes people i understand the you know the idea of like lifting heavy will make me bulky but lifting heavy will also make you build more muscle and the more muscle you have the more lean you will appear so i, I say this all the time like 150 full of body fat versus 150 full of muscle is two it looks totally different and i'm talking about one person not two different people that look totally different i'm talking about one person me right now i'm at 175 but me at 175 a year ago looks totally different to, to the 175 that i am today because i have more muscle so i would definitely say start to lift heavy because it will help you build more muscle and the more like the stronger you are the the smaller you will appear because you have more muscle and muscle is more dense but fat takes up more space i hope that was helpful Okay, so I want to start lifting in the gym, but truthfully, I'm scared. I don't know where to start, and I don't want to embarrass myself either. So I would definitely recommend getting a trainer. If you don't want to get a trainer, start trying to find like a CrossFit class where they do a lot of lifting. You could do that for a little bit, learn everything that you need to know, and then go hit it for yourself. But I would definitely say, like, don't worry about like looking embarrassed. Don't don't worry about embarrassing yourself. When you go in the gym, only focus on you. Not I'm saying you will be surprised at how many people in there trying to figure stuff out as well. But I would definitely say getting a trainer so that you won't 
you won't hurt yourself and probably starting like a crossfit group so that you can learn the basic movements and once you learn the basic movements to form go for it. you'll be able to go in the gym and do and go for what you know because you've learned a lot so i hope that was helpful don't be don't be embarrassed girl ain't nobody don't worry about what nobody gotta say go in that gym and do you okay so okay so we're gonna answer two more questions after this one so just curious how was the feeling of shopping updating your wardrobe after the weight loss i'm waiting for that moment Okay, so Miss Jessica, when I first started shopping, like, so it was kind of frustrating. It was like, uh, it was like a happy slash aggravated type of relationship when it came to shopping for new clothes because I knew that, I knew that like I was going to continue to keep losing. So it's like even even now that I'm I've lost all the weight, like I'm still my body is still changing, so I'm never going to kind of like stay at one size. So. I, I I thrive for the day where I get to one size where I'll be like, okay, I'm not, I'm not moving. I'm not, I'm not going nowhere after this. I'm just gonna focus on maintaining. So the only thing is when you start buying what like when you start buying clothes when you on your weight loss journey, it's kind of hard to buy clothes because your body is consistently changing. So one thing I would say is go find you some clothes that kind of conform to your shape, like old navy clothes. I went and bought some new clothes. And even when I had clothes for when I was a little bigger, they still fit as I lost weight. They kind of still conform to my my body so try to find clothes like that and it's just i ain't gonna lie y'all it feel a lot better to go into the store and know like okay you got a, a variety of what you can buy because i remember when i was heavier and i would go in a store and like now i i love the fact that now they have more plus size in stores like old navy now has the plus size section available in stores but back when i first saw that you you did not you would not have that you did not have that wide variety of things like when you will go to the mall you have to go to a specific mall because the forever 21s off Forever 21s didn't have a plus size section so now it makes me a lot it makes me feel a lot better to be able to go into the mall and be able to find something spot on versus having to you know go to a specific place or go online to find my clothes but when you focus on like workout clothes find stuff that conform to your shape because baby you're gonna be wasting a lot of money constantly buying clothes because your body is going to consistently be changing so don't don't forget to like your body's gonna be consistently changing so don't forget to get it get get clothes that that work okay this one okay okay question one of the last two i lost 60 pounds and i think it was my water weight now it's quarter for my pounds to come off i work out 30 minutes every day what am i doing wrong okay so i had mentioned this earlier when you first start when you first start like losing your weight that first 60 pounds will come off fast it will definitely come off fast but that last that after a while it will start to slow down because in a sense it's like your body is trying to like your body is trying to like get used to the change. So I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I do not think you're any, doing anything wrong. If you want to see a more consistent drop, I will definitely say start into counting your calories and counting your macros because that can kind of help you assess what may need to be changed. And I vow about counting macros and counting calories, y'all, because when you hit a plateau, it could be a minor adjustment that you need to make to keep seeing those trends drop. But when you're not, you never know, like you're not really aware of how much you're intaking each day or at a time. So that's why I would say tune into that as well. But I would say that you're not doing anything wrong. I would start, I would say to continue to be consistent. It might not just drop off as fast as that first 60 did. But if you stay consistent, you will still get those results that you're looking for. All right, one more question. Let's see, did I miss anything? Oh, yes, y'all. Please do not forget to like this live. Please do not forget this. Like this live. Okay. Okay, let's see if I seen this. All right, we're going to take one more question. Okay, so that's a great question. Let's let, let this be the last question. So how do you know which one to count macros or calories? So in a sense, it's the same thing, but it's not the same thing. So let me show y'all 
my thing. Okay, so if we go to my fitness pal, every day you have a certain amount of calories. So, like, let's see, let's go here. So every day you have a certain amount of calories. So this is like an empty day, but like, okay, this is like right here will be the certain amount. Of, oh my finger, child. Right here will be a certain amount of calories. This is like after all day, but then these are your macros. So one thing is, it's just how tedious you want to be when it comes to it, because having those macros can help. Like count those macros can help with your hunger cues. Can help to make sure that you preserve as much muscle as possible. But for the purposes of first starting, you can start with just counting your calories. So when you first start counting your calories, literally you still in a caloric deficit. Your macros, macros matter. Ma ugh. Macros matter, but if you still count your calories, you still will get the same results as far as weight loss. So I would definitely recommend to start with counting your calories. And once you get the hang of that, then you can move into counting your macros. So start with calories first and then move into counting your macros. Because I know one of my other fitness sisters, she do not count macros. She just count her calories. She do focus on protein, but she do not count her macros. So it's all up to preference. If you can get the hang of counting your calories and you're perfectly fine with that, just stick with, stick with that. So you remember, the goal is to find something that gives you less stress as possible. So if you only want to focus on counting your calories, Go for it. You don't have to focus on macros. Okay. Yes, this will be posted on my page. Okay, so we way past time, y'all. We way past time. And I'm going to leave it at that. So, y'all, I want to thank everyone who joined in to this weight loss q and I will definitely be doing these again. I will. It's going to take some time for me to do the timestamp, but I promise to have it up at least by tomorrow in the description. This video will be uploaded as soon as I end this live for y'all to go back and watch. But I will try to get a timestamp up as soon as possible, which means I will have to go back and watch every video. No worries. I should have been keeping track. But anyways, I thank you all for tuning in to this live. Thank y'all so much for all y'all love and support. And with that being said, y'all, don't forget, if you want your caloric deficit calculator, your macros figured out, I will be leaving the links below in the description for you to submit for that as well. Go ahead and start your journey today. And if you're watching this live and you have not started and you're thinking about starting, realize all these women on here in this live is here to support. We are here to support. We are all in this together, ladies. So please continue to keep pushing. Keep going hard, even on the days where you don't feel like it, because those are the days that matter. So just keep pushing. And with that being said, y'all already know the drill. Come back and message your girl. Peace out.